Welcome back guys to Kerbal Space Explosion. So we're in the middle of a series of rescue missions and lo and behold, they've been an overwhelming success. Here in our Lost tab, we can find our most recent rescuees, Jebediah, Bill, Bob, and Tom Hat. Yeah, yeah, they did. They're dead. They're dead. Whoops. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. Uh, the rescue mission didn't exactly go as planned. But I think it was funny, and things exploded, and that's really what matters, isn't it? Anyway, in between last episode and this episode, a patch came out. So we are now in the 0.23.5 patch. It's sort of a halfway patch. And this is the patch that contains the NASA asteroid mission. And it also contains a number of parts and a few other balance tweaks. You can notice down here at the bottom is a, a little arrow, and you can actually time warp from this screen now. And if you go into the tracking station, you can time warp from this screen as well. You can see up at the top, you've got the little green arrow keys to denote how fast you're going. And then if you look out here, we've got a number of objects with question marks. These are asteroids. It says, unknown object, last seen 28 minutes ago, class size C, which is medium. Looks like all of these are C-class. And I don't know if you have to go further out to find high, uh, bigger ones, or if I just happen to get all of them the same size, if it's just randomly generated and it'll change periodically. I don't know. I haven't really messed around with the asteroids yet. We will get to that eventually. Uh, but that's one of the new things. And there's a new item in the game that allows you to attach to an asteroid and then you can pilot it around try to change its orbit i'm not sure exactly what the mission is you try to get it to crash land and like cause ragnarok on kerbin or something and uh thor gets swallowed by a wolf and all that kind of stuff i'm not sure uh, anyway okay so one of the cool things is that there are some oh okay this is going to be a long black screen there we go there are new items in the tech tree you can see the items I don't have, we still have uh, a little number one here, a five here, and a one here. This is a new node in the tech tree. I wasn't sure how they were going to handle the new parts in the tech tree because lo and behold, they've added a new size category for engines and tanks. So these are, I think, like 3.75 meter diameter tanks. They're bigger than orange tanks, and I kind of thought they would have put them on their own tier out here that would have been more expensive uh, because they basically make the orange tank and the mainsail obsolete. But I think now, if you look here, I think what they decided to do is to give you the orange tank and the mainsail earlier, which kind of makes the skipper obsolete. I, I know there are some people out there that prefer... The skipper, I, I'm, I've never really seen a point to it. Anyway, uh, here's one of the new items. This is the only one I've clicked on to add because I wanted to mess around with them a little bit before I started recording. But I figured I'd save most of them uh, for recording or for, for unlocking in the recording. So here's the first one. This is a huge booster. It gives 650, 650 thrust uh, and mass is 21. So the old thruster we used to use a lot before we got the orange tanks was this guy. So it has uh, ha double the thrust of this guy and weighs three times as much. So it's huge. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and add that. And for whatever reason, you've got these manual add nodes. Maybe so you acknowledge the parts. Also, we've got this. This is the advanced grabbing unit. This is what you use to grab onto the asteroids. That takes 160 science. I'm going to go ahead and research that. Then we've got a launch escape system. Kurt tried to make something almost exactly like this, except with Separatrons. And looks like they added something uh, to basically lift your command pod away from a, a, a ship that is exploding. And it has pretty high thrust, 750. Go ahead and research that and then here we've got the enlarged tanks and the enlarged rockets look at the thrust on this guy 2500 for reference 
the mainsail, which is very powerful and makes the game a lot easier to get things in orbit, which I use for a lot of my heavy lifting. His 1500. This is 2500. This is a big decoupler. This one's 3200. And you can just stack, um, you can stack fuel tanks on top of these just like any other fuel tank. There's a fuel tank, there's a fuel tank, there's a fuel tank, there's an adapter. And the one I unlocked off camera is this guy. This is quote unquote a thruster that you can throttle up and down. Um, so it's not really a thruster and it uses liquid fuel and oxidizers. Oxidizer. So really it's just a, basically it's the same size as an orange tank with engines on the bottom. Um, and it masses a bit more because it has the engine. So it's basically uh, a, a an orange tank with a mainsail on the bottom, but it's more powerful than a mainsail. So it makes this completely obsolete. Anyway, the main thing I wanted to mess around with is this guy. This guy was added in the previous patch in 0.23, and I never got far enough into the tech tree to actually mess around with it. This is an engine that switches automatically from being a jet engine to being a rocket engine. As a jet engine, it only uses liquid fuel and you need an air intake and it operates in the air just like a jet engine. It is a jet engine and it has very high ISP, 800 all the way up to 2500 at its peak efficiency. And then once you get up to a certain altitude, the air gets too thin and you have no intake, it'll switch automatically to a rocket engine and it'll start using oxidizer. That's what I want to mess around with now. Okay, here's a very basic, a very basic jet plane. And the only thing that really separates it from other jet planes is that it uses rocket fuel instead of jet fuel. The only difference is that this has oxidizer, so it's a little bit heavier. Um, so important to note, there's two cockpits and only one pilot. That's because the ultimate goal Next episode, I would like to launch something um, that uses these engines to go rescue somebody. I want to use this engine for one of our our rescue missions, and I've never made a single stage to orbit jet plane, and I want to make one, so let's fiddle with this guy. I'm not going to try to take this guy into orbit. I just want to fly him around a little bit, see how maneuverable he is. Whoa! Uh... Okay, let's try it. Uh-huh. Let's <laughs> let's try a different model. All right. So, um obviously the problem with that last jet is that it wasn't complicated enough and we didn't have enough engines, right? I think we need a little bit more power. <laughs> so, let's try this guy out. We went from uh from one rapier engine to five. Oh, and by the way, I've named this and the previous jet the uh respectively or I guess reverse order, the last jet and this jet, I've named the Rapier Mark I, or not the Rapier, uh, the Ricard Mark I and the Ricard II. That's a reference to a certain game, which I like very much. Okay, so one thing about this is that these wheels are too far back, and I can't lift off. I, I do actually have canards way up here. You can see them rotating. There we go. Whoa! <laughs> it flies, though. We took off. And if you've got to wait until you get to the end of that runway where it drops off to, to take off, you've probably done something wrong. And I could probably fix uh, a lot of problems with this thing if I just took these wheels and moved them farther forward. You know what? There's a uh, there's a runway over here. Maybe we should go mess around with that. One of the things that uh, people do, it's a sort of like a test of basic piloting skills. There's a bridge over there in the astronaut complex or whatever. And people like to try to fly under it. I was going to try to do it with this. Uh, but maybe we'll try to go over there. Now, this looks very similar to our previous jet. And that's because it's the same jet, just with uh, four extra engines decoupled onto it. So we can actually dump these guys once they run out of fuel. And they're all dumping their, their fuel in here right now. Yeah, but, it, but it's so efficient. We don't even need the fuel lines, really. It's more for if I wanted to try to take this guy into orbit, which I'm not going to bother to. 
Nah, let's go this way a bit. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm descending. We don't want to do that. There is... I don't know, I don't think I've ever showed it on camera, but I've flown past it a few times. Uh, messing around with jet planes. There is a runway over here on this island. Which, most people who play Kerbal Space Program are familiar with it. I don't know if it is it... I don't think it really counts as an Easter egg. It's it's just it's so close. It doesn't really count as an Easter egg. There is an alternate astronaut complex somewhere. I think it's like over here somewhere that you can go land on and it kind of looks abandoned. And there's some other Easter eggs which I've never really gone to explore. I might do that eventually just for fun. Uh, make some kind of ship to go explore those and there, there's also some uh, on the moon, I know there's a, uh, a monolith, like in 2001, a space odyssey. Let's see how maneuverable this guy is. Uh, can we do a loop-de-loop? -loop? Let's try to do a loop-de-loop. -loop. We're upside... Are we upside down? Yes. No, we were fine. Okay, let's try to do a loop-de-loop. Loop-de-loop! -loop, Scott Carmen. Uh, I assume that that guy is named after... Uh, Oh, gosh. Here we go. This is a very slow loop-de-loop -loop after uh, Scott Manley. It seems like most of their normal randomly generated names are very weird. Yeah! Look at this. Loop-de-loop. -loop, don't fall in the ocean. Oh, gosh. We've got to pull up quick. P pull up quick. Uh, well, we're 1,700 meters above the ocean. I think, yeah, we're going to be fine. Loop-de-loop. -loop, that's my first loop-de-loop -loop in a jet, actually. I don't think I ever actually tried to do one before. And let's, uh, let's demo these decouplers. Whoa! And we're okay! Alright, so, so that much worked, and we still have our landing gear in the wrong place, I might add. Uh, and I think we're, we're gonna be fine. So, so that worked. That was cool. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to build a jet that basically we could fly into orbit and then take all the way to Drace because we left a Kerman in orbit there. So I want to build something, and that was the idea, to make something big because I figured I would use a certain amount of fuel getting into orbit, and then I could jettison those parts, and I'd want to make sure that what's left would still be flyable in atmosphere because we'd have to land as, when we come back. That's the goal. I mean, <laughs> uh, like my previous rescue mission, that might end in catastrophic failure. There's the landing. I'm still very bad at, at uh, landing. But let's see if we can pull it off. And uh, then we'll try something even bigger than, <laughs> than what I've just flown over here. And like I said before, I'm very bad at landing. I haven't really practiced it much. And I've, I've lined up landings okay in the past, but where I always fail is it seems like as soon as I, I touch the wheels down and I hit the brakes, the whole thing just flies sideways. And I'm not sure exactly why that is. Okay, let's cut our engines. Uh, let's just glide in. That's probably better. We may lose our alti altitude a little bit too quickly, though. We seem to be aimed pretty quick. Uh, pretty quickly. Uh, we seem to be aimed pretty well on where we need to be. We need to bring that. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're falling because that that uh, runway right there. It's not at sea level, so we need to pull up a bit, or otherwise we're gonna hit this land too hard. I don't know the actual elevation of it. But we want to make sure that we don't just like smack into that, into the land at a bad, uh, bad angle. Oh, here we go, Scott. I, Scott, you're you're supposed to be such a good pilot. How are you gonna? Better you better not mess this up. Oh no, yeah, we're too low. No, okay, we're fine. Okay, okay. Yes, hit the B button. Uh oh, oh, we went we went right through that. Hey, look at this! Good, good job, Scott! Hello, Scott Manley here. Look at that, I actually landed something. Okay, let's try another jet. 
Yes! Now that is more like it. Power! <laughs> so I realized something. I was doing some tests with the rapier engine. And once you get to a certain elevation, you run out of intake. So you can see right here, we have intake 0.20 out of 0.20. And as your elevation climbs, you get less and less. So I thought, hmm, I know how to brute force things. I'm just going to add a whole lot of intakes to this guy. Uh, but I think while this jet does fly, and it is kind of ridiculous, it's actually, it's not that efficient because it takes... Once you get to the point where the uh, the engines switch to to rocket engines and they become less efficient, you have to use a lot of your fuel just to get this guy into orbit. I did test it beforehand. Spoiler alert, but I feel like I need some kind of like 80s hairband doing a rock ballad like uh, with sparks and stuff in the background while I launch this. It needs to be part of some music video from the 80s. Maybe part of Top Gun. Not Top Gun, something a little more metal than Top Gun. Okay, here we come to the, uh, where the runway runs out, and I'll start to pull back. Yes! And, <laughs> look at that! Landing gear up. It flies. Can you believe this thing? Uh, I hope it flies. I think it flies. Look at that. That is massive. That is three of these, uh, FLT-800s in a row. Times eight of these. Eight of, or, no. Uh, six, seven. Seven rapier engines there. I can count. And then four more on the side here, which we can, uh, we can discard when they run out of fuel. And then we've got these guys. These are empty fuel tanks because I didn't feel like chaining them with the fuel lines, but they're the, they're just there to hold the, the air intakes. Yeah, but this thing flies. It definitely flies. Uh, but we're not taking this one with us on our rescue trip to Drace. Let's go ahead and uh, stage those, see what happens. Well, I mean, that's gonna happen, but I wanted to see if it would blow up or something. Oh, look at that, this guy's trapped. What's, what's happening there? Hello. Hello. Wichita, Kansas, hello. There we go, it's kinda stuck. Okay, but we're not taking this guy, so let's do like a kamikaze run, see how maneuverable this guy is. Look at him doing these sharp turns here. I wonder if I can just lose... Yeah, he's not losing stability at all. Not really. Oh, but we are losing altitude. Oh, gosh. No, no. Yeah, we lost stability. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. Great. Hope you enjoyed the video. Next time, we're going to put one of these guys in orbit. I promise. See you later. Take it easy. Have a good day, bye-bye.